Hi there everyone, welcome back to Dandelion Delphi Tutorials. Grade 12, we're still busy with two-dimensional array. And we are going to have a look at how to remove rows and columns from our 2D array. Now let's say we wanted to remove row 3 of my data in my two-dimensional array. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start at row 3 with my loops. And I'm going to put the next row over that values in the, in the row before it. And so I will continue. So row 4 will go over row 3, row 5 over row 4, and row 6 over row 5. The columns stay in the same position. I'm just moving all of these values one up, uh, starting at the row that I want to delete and replacing that row with the next values. Here's the code to do exactly that. So to remove a row, I want to remove row 3. I'm going to loop to I count minus 1. Let's say my array had space for 20 learners and I have filled the array up to 20 for the rows. Then in here, I want to go to I row plus 1. Now if this, was, if this came all the way to 20 and I'm trying to go to 21, my program will crash and I will experience a runtime error. So here's it important to go up to I count R minus 1. So if I'm going to delete a row of data from the mark, I also delete this person's name from the one-dimensional array. And that is what I'm doing in here. This is also a little reminder to you on how to delete values from a one-dimensional array. So the current row, let's say row 3 that I want to replace, now gets the value of the next row. So for the first time that this loop executes, this will be 4, 3 plus 1 is 4, and that value will be placed over the name that used to be stored in the array position number 3. Now I also need to remove the marks from the two-dimensional array. And I'm going to keep my columns the same. You'll see that I call stays the same. I'm looping through all four terms and I'm replacing the mark in, for example, row 3 with the mark in 3 plus 1, so that is row 4. Just for the example, I made this array to have only six rows, so we were removing row 3. And at the end of these loops, you will see that the last two rows contain the same values because remember we took this row and put it over that row. Outside of this loop we can now clear the, the array in the last position. So in the example that I showed you just now it was position 6. I'm emptying the string and I'm just setting all the values to 0 of my array mark. And now because I have one row less I need to take one off my row counter. So if I count R is now one value smaller. By changing this variable here, I will be able to use my display procedure to display my updated array again. This is your time to practice, so try remove learner button and see if you get the output below, below when Lucas was entered. We can also remove columns in the same way that we removed rows. So let's say I wanted to remove rows, uh, column 6. I will put the values of 7 over 6 and 8 over 7 and 9 over 8 until the last one, 10 over 9. I want to remove a column, so I will start with the for loop for the column. And I want to remove column 6, so therefore I start at column 6. And remember, we don't want to go all the way to the end. We want to go to I count C minus 1. And then my rows will stay the same. Here's my nested loop for the rows. So you will see our row stays the same. But the columns are then replaced by the next value in the next column. You will see that I don't, I'm not deleting from my one dimensional array here because my rows are still staying the same. So I'm not removing a learner. I'm removing a column. Once this code ran, and I had an array with 10 columns, you'll see that the last two columns are now the same. So we need to get rid of that last column. 
All I'm doing here is I'm replacing the last column of all the rows, using my for loop for the rows, with a zero. And then remember, we want to make our column counter one less. So that I, instead of having 10 columns, as in the example, I will now have 9 because I have removed one. We can also add values to our arrays. To add to the end of an array is pretty simple, and I'm sure you'll be able to do that on your own. But to add a learner at a specific point, or add a row at a specific point, is a little harder. So since I'm adding a new learner at a specific point, the learners are in the rows, so I will start with my for loop for my row. But this time I'm starting at the end of my array, at the bottom. And I'm looping down to the position that I want to insert this new person into. I also need to make space for their name. So what this code is doing is, let's say I had, I count R was 19. I'm putting in row 20. I'm putting the value of 19. So row 20 and 19 is going to have the same value. My term marks will stay in the same columns. The terms are not moving. But I'm going to do the same thing for my array marks. And I'm putting in row 20 the marks of row 19. So my loops will continue to execute. And I'm going to explain to you what happens when our row is 4. So when our row is 4, 4 is placed over row 5. So when I'm done with this loop, row 4 and 5 is going to hold the same name. I then do the same for the marks, and row 5 and 4 will now have the same marks as well. So I can now place the new values in row 4. So if you look at the output here, at this point, if I output the two-dimensional array and the one-dimensional array, these two rows will have the same values. Now I simply need to get the values for the new person. I want to put them in position 4, and that's their name. And then I need to have marks for this person, and depending on the question, it could be random or reading from a text file, but I'm putting these marks now in the row 4, changing from co column 1 to 4. You will see that we use similar code for inserting a column at a certain position. We'll start with a for loop for the column this time. And then the rows stayed the same, but we're replacing the column with the previous column. And then we might be required to add new marks for this column. So that's what I'm doing with this for loop here. I also need to now increment my count again because I added a new column to my two-dimensional array. Here is your time to practice. So try and complete the button Add Learner. And here you can practice various skills, but we are going to remove a term. There's more output below. I'll show you just now. Here is the output for the rich edit. So here's the memo for the button to add a learner. So we're adding a row. It would be important to first test if your array is full. So if I have rich 20, I can't add another learner because I've declared an array with 20 rows. And if I add another learner... I will then, my program will then crash with a runtime error saying access violation. And now I'm asking the person what position they want to add this person into. So I'm looping with my row counter from the row counter down to iPods to make a space for this learner, moving them all up one as well as their marks. Now I have one extra learner, so I'm going to increment my counter so that it's one higher and in here I'm going to place now the person's name as per the user's input at the position they wanted and I'm also allocating marks for them. Quick reminder about random range, remember the second value here is excluded so this will create values from 80 to 99 and then I'm calling my display procedure. Here is the memo to remove a term the user can select which term they would like to remove. So I'm re removing a column, and therefore I'll start with a for loop for the column, starting at the point where I want to remove it, going up to I count C minus 1. 
and replacing every mark with the next one in the next column. Then for this last column here, that is still I count C. That would still be the last item. I'm just changing them all to zero. I now have one column less, so I am decreasing this I count C variable. And I was asked to display the two-dimensional array at this point in my string grid. So I can use my display procedure. So I remove was the value that the user entered of the column they wanted to be removed. But now you were asked to put a new column back in that same position. So that's why I'm using my same variable here. And I'm starting at the end of my loop and I'm looping down to this position. And I'm replacing my marks in my two-dimensional array here. So the last mark will have the mark of the previous column and so on. And then I increase my counter again for my columns because now I have one column extra again. Here at the end, I'm just clearing my rich edit and adding my headings. And since I'm displaying in my rich edit, I always have to start with a for loop for the row because I'm displaying in a rich edit row by row. Now this mark here for column I removed that the user entered is currently holding the same value as the column next to it. So I need to give it a new value and you were asked to give it a random value. And that's what I'm doing in this part of my code here. And then I'm building my string to be able to display it in my rich edit. And I'm adding on to my name. I'm adding all the marks. And now I'm displaying S line inside of my rich edit. And voila! Great 12s, I hope this helped. We are not yet done with two dimensional arrays. So I hope to see you soon.